Spencer kind of has been somebody that's gotten a few looks in the red zone. I mean, he's on the field all the time, you know, for the last few years. But how have you seen him come along? Like targeting tar targets been a uh, yeah, it hasn't been a, a point of emphasis, uh, you know, to, to get him a ton of targets. Uh, he certainly deserves them. I mean, he's probably our most complete receiver when it comes to understanding the offense, understanding all three positions at wide receiver and the element that he brings in the in the run game in terms of his ability to block. And so um, I think that it's a good thing that he's getting those targets and touches in the red zone. and. You know, uh, he's our by far our most, most trustworthy receiver. So uh, he he deserves it. Uh, we'll continue to keep trying to make that happen. I can't guarantee it because I don't get to call the defensive plays. But um, you know, we'll, we'll keep trying to to get him some opportunities. The basic like impulse of most receivers is they want the ball as much as possible. Um, and for somebody who's been on the field as much as he has. He's not really somebody that a lot of people talk about. You have the Dontres and the Ezekiels and the list goes on. How do you see him handling that portion of it? I know that he wants to come and be a good blocker and help the team and all that, but I mean, is it tough ever for him to just kind of be one of the guys uh, that may get lost in the shuffle sometimes? Yeah, that'd be a better question for him. Uh, you know, I'm not in his mind, but I do know this. He's a very selfless guy that uh, never once complains openly, just goes out and does his job and does it as good as anybody in the conference, I would argue anybody in the country. Uh, so, you know, I I would assume, uh, yeah, uh, me being around wide receivers as much as I have, yeah, they all want to catch 15 balls a game. But uh, I think that he's just happy getting W's, and he's a team guy and a selfless guy, and you know, he'll have, a, in my opinion, should have a, a pretty decent career at the next level just because he's so versatile and, and can do so many things. Irwin touched on this a little bit. In training camp, you lose two of your offensive captains. You guys have had a lot of young players, a lot of inexperienced players. In some cases, both on offense step in. Are you surprised at the production of this offense, given the fact that there's so many new pieces? Uh, I, I don't know that surprise is the right word. I don't think any time you do well offensively, you say that the emotion is surprised. I think you expect to do well offensively, no, uh, no matter what the circumstances are. But I'm pleased with the progress that we've made with a lot of the inexperienced guys that, that we do have and happy with the trajectory that, that we're on. Um, but I, I think the expectation is to, to always do well. And again, I'm going to use the word surprise, but <laughs> when you're calling plays, um, do you ever get surprised, given the fact that you guys have speed all over the place, does it surprise you that teams are still pressing you guys and, and daring you to take the shots down the field? Yeah, I, that, that one does surprise me. Um, I will certainly uh, use that, that word there. I, I don't know what the reason. I don't know the uh, thought process behind it. Uh, I do know we're a lot better throwing the football now than – we were in week one or week two, and so, uh, you know, teams continue to do that. I don't think there's any hesitation on our part to to throw the football and, and uh, hopefully make them pay for, for having that philosophy. Front row, Bill. You just took my question, so I'll ask another one. Um, what do you think needs to improve uh, on this offense? I mean, I, I point out the red zone has, has been an issue. How close is this to kind of reaching max potential and, and how close, what do you need to do? Yeah, I think our our red zone or goal line or scoring touchdowns in the red zone is certainly not where we want it to be. Now, we've, we've set the bar pretty high, finishing first in the country, or I think second our first year and first last year uh, in touchdown percentage in the red zone. So the bar has been set around here very high. And um, we expect to do that, and we need to do a better job of that. And um, you know, most of it is stubbornness on, on my part. And, you know, teams have lined up in fronts and coverages, even down there, that have, have dared us to, to throw the football. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to do a better job of that down there. Uh, but to answer the question of other than that, what, what do I feel like needs improvement? I just think the, the overall play-by-play uh, -play, uh, technique of each guy not 
kind of be a uh, consistency of great technique I think would probably be the the biggest thing that I want to see improvement on is not hey I played with great technique for three plays and then on the fourth play I didn't I, I think we're capable now and, and moving in the direction of hey you need to play with great technique for 80 plays in a row and I, I think that's a fair expectation given the, the point in the season that we're at Tom, with, with that in mind, By the way, uh, Jerry just called you Timbo. Yeah, no. <laughs> He's coming. Uh, coming one time, Jerry. But uh, with that in mind, uh, is, there, is there a certain macho factor for a football team in the red zone that you, you want to establish? Do you understand what I mean of shoving guys off the ball? And how do you temper that, I guess, with making your mark but also scoring a touchdown or taking the easiest way? Do you understand what I'm asking? I, yeah, I do. I, I don't think it's a, a, an ego thing or a macho thing or a, a – you know, taking the soft way out. I think, you know, as with anything in offensive football, the defense is going to present itself strengths and weaknesses each time you line up and snap the football. And to, to say that we have taken advantage of those weaknesses down there on the goal line, uh, we, we haven't and, and we need to. And we don't care what those weaknesses are. We just need to do a better job of, of exploiting those weaknesses and not trying to beat our head against the wall into their strengths. With that said, do you see an offensive line the last several games? Y'all haven't played against the greatest defenses in the country, but have you seen an offensive line sort of get a grit to itself? I mean, what, what do you see from your offensive line, I guess, at this point? Yeah, the thing I was the happiest about, I think I said it after the Cincinnati game. Taylor Decker probably played his nastiest game as a Buckeye. You know, I think the two inside, three really three inside guys have always kind of had that nastiness to them. And then uh, Daryl Baldwin, you know, continues to develop that as well. So, yeah, they're 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 getting there. I, I think uh, they kind of see over the last couple of weeks. Hey, we we can be pretty good, and and they've developed a little bit of confidence. I think with the what. It, some stat I saw, I don't know, I had a chance to watch football the other day where I think the second least amount of uh, combined starts for any starting uh, five offensive linemen in, in Division One football. So I think the fact that they've had some success and can, some, can build some confidence, then, you know, the, you, you start to open Pandora's box, so to speak, and they can now feed off of that confidence and, and play with a, a nastier edge. Is your offense different now than if Braxton Miller were still at the helm? Because it seems if quarterback in more medicine, he'd be the really gifted specialist, and JT's the really gifted general practitioner. <laughs> I've never heard that analogy, but that's that's a fair one. Uh, I don't know that it's really that much different. I get that question quite a bit. I, you guys like to deal in what ifs and, and hypotheticals. We, I, I like to deal in what is and, and reality. And so I don't think that it would be much different. Obviously, the home run ability of him when he tucks the ball and runs it, whether it be on a design run, a scramble, a read, whatever, uh, is going to be there when Braxton's in and, and as opposed to when he's not. But other than that, I, I don't think that the plays that are going to be called or the formations that we line up in or just the overall philosophy of the offense, I don't think would change uh, dramatically. But again, that's it's hard for me to say because I'm, I'm just trying to beat Rutgers with what we got right now. So, On the score of Rutgers, they have 24 sacks this year. What is it that they're doing well to get pressure on the quarterback? Oh, their, their front four are very active. They don't blitz a ton on uh, – First and second down, uh, I think somewhere in the range between 15 and 20 percent. And on third down, they, they try to really create confusion and havoc, and they've got a whole third down specialist type deal where they're going to run a bunch of different guys in on the field and line up in some crazy alignments and, and try to confuse you and, and pressure the quarterback on third down. But on first and second down, they're, they're getting their sacks because their their front four is very active, very quick, quick hands, quick feet. Uh, and then on third down, just a lot of confusion. Um, you recruited JT, and you've worked with him here since, what, January of 2013. You probably expected he would play well, but is he even further along than you expected? 
again, I don't know that I ever put an expectation level and said, hey, on October 13th, I expect him to be at this level. But where he's at is, is a good place with still a lot of room for improvement. So to say he's further along than I expected, I don't know that I ever expected anything. Um, but to say that he is in a place that I am pleased with right now would be an accurate assessment, knowing that he still has things that, that he can continue to get better at. I want to ask about Michael Thomas, too. He went from redshirting last year as a sophomore, which that's pretty rare, um, and now he's one of the standouts of the wide receiving core. How far has he come? What's been the big difference with Trust. Michael Thomas? Trust. Trust. Um, uh, you know, I think it's well documented that Mike was a, and again, it wasn't, he wasn't going right when you, he was supposed to go left. It wasn't just absolute ridiculous things. It was, hey, this route's supposed to be at 14 yards and you run it at 11, or, you know, you're supposed to line up on the numbers and you line up four yards inside the numbers. And so the, the trust factor with him of being at the right place at the right time and doing the right thing in order to get there has increased exponentially. And, and so he's been able to see the field quite a bit more. And then in turn, when his number has been called, he's, he's produced. Far left, Rusty. Uh, first play week you had this year, you didn't skip a beat going into the next game. I'm just wondering if it's difficult at all to maintain that tempo and timing when you're not playing a game. Uh, it can if you let it be. I, I think we, we need to do a really good job of refocusing the team today and understanding that what lies ahead is uh, uh, as stiff a challenge as we'll face defensively. So, and the good thing is we're, we've, we've got good kids. Uh, there's really no issues on the team. And so the, and they watch film, you know, they, they see what, what we see on defense and kind of understand that, you know, we're, we're going to have to bring our A game. Uh, you're still dealing with 18 to 22 year olds. So the, the psychology of, of motivating them and in, in order to get that done still plays a little bit of part, but these guys have, throughout the season kind of handled themselves as pros and and I don't think that's going to be an issue although we'll certainly address it with them and and harp on the fact that we do need to then now refocus since we're in game week and last question Doug Tom you guys obviously we know how well you ran the ball last year you're very balanced this year just what you're getting out of the run game is it are you happy with what you're doing running the ball to allow you to do everything you want to do as a whole offense to set up the throwing or to stay balanced? Yeah, I don't, I don't know that you're ever happy in this business, but you're, um, yeah, I, I guess you could say I'm, I'm happy with where we're at. But again, understanding that there, there still are things that, uh, that there are yards that we've left out there, whether it be from the technique issues that, that I was talking about or the my stubbornness to, to call a play into a front that might not be conducive to a, to a specific play. But uh, I, I think we can get better, but I'm happy with, with where we're at right now, understanding that uh, the guys, un, under, me understanding and you understanding that the offense understands that it needs to improve as the season goes on. And I know you're just getting ready for Rutgers in the next game, but for, for any assistant coach here, what are some of the things that you absorb from Urban Meyer just on how you run a program, how you run a team, how you be it. You know, just what do you sort of pick up from him through a season? Yeah, I think the, probably the biggest thing is the alignment of the staff in terms of the messages that are being delivered to each and every position group. I think the alignment of the players and their, their uh, belief in our core values and belief in our culture, the belief in uh, what we're – uh, selling to them each and every day on, on how to be successful. And I think that's uh, maybe a trait that, that might go unnoticed. You know, you, you talk about coaches that are great X's and O's guys or coaches that can give a great pregame speech and all that good stuff. But really, at the end of the day, you've got to have your nine assistants and then the entire team aligned as such with a common belief in the culture and the, the core values of your program. And I think he, he does that better than anybody I've, I've ever been around.